to getting guns off the streets. A recent investigative report by the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel lists a series of blunders. In operations in six cities, agents allegedly took advantage of the mentally ill, set up stings near churches and schools, and made decisions that some claim actually increased crime in their neighborhoods. Three key members of Congress have written a letter to the ATF's director demanding answers. One of those is Congressman Darrell Issa, Republican from California and chairman of the House Oversight Committee. Chairman, good to see you today. Good to see you, Shannon. And, and you know, this is Fast and Furious Revisited. You finally have a confirmed director with Beeb Todd Jones who was supposed to clean up this operation. And instead, what you see in many of these cases, they're continuing. They're continuing to have this be what's called a rogue organization. But I think for the members of the ATF, I want to make sure I make one thing clear. The ATF never acts alone. The FBI and the U.S. attorneys in each of these areas, political appointees in the case of the U.S. attorney, they work hand in hand. So this is not something where you say, well, it's a few agents, as they tried to say initially in Fast and Furious. This is the president, President Obama's Department of Justice, that continues to support these sting operations, these rogue operations, as they're called, that lead to harm in communities. Well, and the Journal Sentinel said uh, that they found that uh, mentally ill or mentally disabled folks were being used and then later arrested in these cases, that young people were being sort of plied, according to their allegations, with alcohol and with pot. People were being offered huge sums to turn in guns, um, almost paid off in a sense, uh, creating a, a cottage industry of doing this. Um, and, you know, so far what we're hearing from the ATF, they had a statement that said that this is biased reporting uh, and that they were doing their jobs. Their job is to enforce the system that prevents guns from being sold wrong. And then they do have an investigative role, but they have that hand in hand with the FBI and the U.S. Attorneys and Department of Justice. I think what we have here, once again, is a war on guns, if you will, that, that causes them to take these bold moves, bold and reckless moves, because they hate guns so much. Fast and Furious had the opposite effect. It made Americans scared of their government, and particularly when the Attorney General and the President refused to answer questions about false statements made to the American people. And whether it's Fast and Furious, and they're not doing it, or being lied to by the NSA, the American people are getting tired of assuming that an agency does one thing and then finding out that they're abusing citizens, and in this case, the mentally retarded. Well, the Oversight Committee has been very busy. Your critics uh, say that it's politically driven. Uh, they're not happy about how busy you've been. But let me ask you about another thing that you've been probing, which is Benghazi. Something I hear, and I'm sure you get this question all the time, why not appoint a select committee? Why hasn't that happened? Will it happen? Well, I think one thing that the American people have a hard time understanding is a special prosecutor, a criminal special prosecutor, is a different entity. And we could have a discussion about, in light of the IRS, <laughs> essentially being investigated by a political, a, almost a political operative of the president with the amount of money she gave. That's a good case for a special prosecutor. In the case of select committees, the fact is I have all the same powers and have used all the same authorities as a select committee would use. This administration is slow, and as you know, this administration is transparent in their willingness to not deliver to all the committees lawful subpoenaed uh, material. And I think that's where we're beginning to have some, some real uh, headway. Uh, a Obama appointee, a federal judge, has in fact begun going forward to order the administration to turn over the false statements and the information related to it in Fast and Furious. It may break loose the whole idea that this administration cannot deliver us what they want, lie to us when they want to, and then slow roll any kind of discovery of information related to false statements. Are we any closer to answers on Benghazi about what we were doing there, about what really happened? Well, I think until last Sunday with the New York Times, we were getting closer. Uh, it's very clear that what we had there was a terrorist attack that was premeditated and could be easily predicted because the communications show it was predicted, a failure to give our people the kind of security that even uh, Admiral Mullen said, had they had it, there wouldn't have been an attack in all likelihood. And then the question of why did they give us a false statement trying to take a little piece of information and call it a video. So are we getting closer? Yes. We're interviewing this coming next two weeks DOD people for the first time in an unclassified role, asking them to tell us what we can then make available to the American people. And I think the important thing on Benghazi is we know a lot, but we deserve, the American people deserve to know it publicly for them to see the facts as given in sworn testimony.
Mr. Chairman, thanks for coming in today. Good to see you. Thank you. All right, coming up after the break. There is nothing enjoyable about a job where you put 